Uh, I do need Andrew Brandt. And thankfully, I get Andrew Brandt every week on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. I also listen to the Business of Sports Podcast. Andrew's up there in Frank Isola category. With He's a columnist for the MMQB. He hosts the Business of Sports Podcast. He's an executive for Vayner Sports, Gary V. Former Packers exec, speaking of brats. Former ESPN legal and business analyst. He does stuff at Villanova, and he's got the best newsletter out there with his Sunday 7, which I enjoy every morning, every Sunday morning, getting that stuff. Andrew, long time no talk. How are you? Ross, man, 48 hours. How do we deal without being together? Here we are again. I appreciate all the intro. I always say I have a lot of jobs, so I don't have to have a real one. I, I love it. So, <laughs> Andrew, here's my question. You spent like 10 years in Green Bay, but I also know – you are Mr. Healthy. Like the guy does triathlons. The guy's got ripped six pack abs. Did you partake in brats when you lived in Wisconsin? Hmm. Well, only when I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be this antisocial guy that shows up and then they're only serving brats. And I would go ask, uh, "Hey guys, you got any tofu?" <laughs> you know, that wouldn't have gone over well. So I played the game. But yeah, I mean, listen, Wisconsin is where I got into triathlon and running and biking because you talk about a hardy group of people. I mean, there are people running 350 days a year out there with the crampons on their shoes and the ice and snow. So yeah, I mean, they're, they, they don't eat that healthy, but they can be very healthy out there. What's your policy on onions in general? Onions are fine. I'm good with onions. Okay. I got no issue with onions. Yeah, I, I don't like onions. Onions, <laughs> I, I don't detest them quite as much as mayonnaise, but they're up there. Mayonnaise is still, I mean, I at this point in life, I just feel bad for people that like mayonnaise. Uh, at, at any mayonnaise rate, mayonnaise is bad, and beets, beets is my thing. Yeah, I'm not going near beets. Yeah, and Tom Brady's not going near onions or mayonnaise because he knows what's up. You know what's up. So we're seeing a lot of this, Andrew. Brady signs a four-year deal, but they're saying it's really only one more. Saves the team $19 million against the cap. What What is all this going on? Yeah, it looks like Tampa's using Brady to get their cap uh, relief. You know, we see this around the league right now, Ross, where teams are bonusing out players. And when you bonus, you can prorate out the bonus for the years remaining on the contract. So you lower your cap this year. So Brady's making 25, basically takes 24 of it puts it into a signing bonus that's prorated, adds a few years to the contract. Some of them are voidable, which mean they're just dummy years there for proration purposes, and they lower the cap number by $19 million. I mean, again, you know me, Ross. I always say whether well, you're going you're gonna to push out pain and you're going to have pain down the road, but Tampa's managed the cap well. It's teams like the Saints and the Steelers that have this constant push out and constant restructuring and it's going to haunt them. You're already seeing, seeing that with the Saints having to cut so many players right now. And it's hard time right now. I mean, this is it, Ross. We have never seen a cap decrease. I've been around the NFL 25 years. And here we go. And teams are slicing, dicing, whatever they need to do to get under. So, you, I mean, you already said it. You don't like this. You don't like no. when teams do the voidable years. You don't like when they push stuff out. But I guess in fairness... And they thought the cap would be like close to 210. It's 182. So if there was ever a year where it's understandable, this is the one, right? Yeah, it's un yeah because people are going to rationalize, yeah, we'll get the big cap increases with the big TV deals. I guess my point is this, Ross. There are, I don't know, 15, 20 teams, maybe 15, that are not doing this, right? And I am saying they are going to be more advantaged maybe short term, certainly long term by not doing this, getting ahead of the curve, having a lot of cap room, being able to load cap and cash the same way where you have flexibility down the road. You're not starting uphill with huge dead num numbers on your cap. Talking with my buddy, Andrew Brandt at Andrew Brandt on Twitter. He's got the business of sports podcast among a bunch of different things. So here's my question about the chiefs yesterday, Andrew, the chiefs released Eric Fisher and Mitch Schwartz. They yeah. both just had major surgeries in February. Now, I don't know if you were ever the guy that had to call and cut guys. 
I know you had great relationships with agents, and obviously they're doing it to save $18 million against the cap. But don't you, wouldn't you feel a little dirty calling a guy to tell him you're firing him a month after he just had a major surgery? Yeah, and let's talk about the, the, the legalities here. You can't cut a player who's injured in terms of having – remaining time on their contract that's going to pay them now here we are in the off season so if this was the season and you cut a guy and an independent doctor says you know he's got eight weeks left on his injury you got to pay him but now there's no game for six months so i guess you can legally say well by that time you know you're certainly be ready to play so we don't we don't owe you any money but you're talking about the morality of it and that's tough. I mean, Mitchell Schwartz, Eric Fisher, I mean, these guys are, are integral to their Super Bowl runs, and it's just unfortunate. But that's where we are right now. I, I mean, you know me, Ross, when I hear things about player empowerment, I'm like, hello, have you seen February and March every year in the NFL? You're seeing this happen. You're seeing these massive cuts that are coming, uh, have been happening, and are going to cut hundreds of millions of dollars just vanishes. Is there somebody to blame for that, Andrew? Is there somebody to blame for the fact that a guy can have an Achilles tendon surgery in February or a back surgery in February and be fired in March? Because, I mean, that, that doesn't happen in the other sports. No, I mean, what, why it doesn't happen in the other sports is you can do all that you just mentioned, Ross, but you got to pay him. And what we're talking about is lack of future guarantees. And, I've, you know, it's a long, involved subject, but it's two parts. One... Can the individual agent do something about it, which they don't seem to be able to do past like two years, you know me, two years and we'll see. And then can the union do something about it where they would say, hey, you cut a veteran before the season, you still got to pay him, pick a number, 10% of his salary. You know, that could be negotiated in, but that's never been done in football and the lack of guarantees make it so different than other sports. So let's get to Russell Wilson. Uh, and I guess on some level, Deshaun Watson as well. Yeah. You were the point person with the agents. That was your job for the Packers. I see the helmet behind you. You're wearing green. Yeah. What What would you be doing right now? What would you be saying to their agents? Because Deshaun Watson clearly wants out, and it kind of seems like Russell Wilson does too. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. That's always the gateway for me with players was the agent because you have to, like you mentioned, I work on those relationships. When I went on road trips and I'm in Detroit or Dallas or Denver, I'm like, I look up the agents in that area and have a, have a drink. You know, it's these kind of situations where you need that. And, and so you're going to Russ's agent and you're going to Deshaun's agent saying, what's the deal? How can we fix it? Now, I've been on this show with Dan <laughs> I was wrong on Wentz saying that Deshaun's not going anywhere. Uh, I am not saying that on Russell Ross because the team, you know, the team has said in Houston, he's our quarterback. We're, you know, we're not trading him. The team in Seattle has not said that, which to me is like, oh, oh, I mean, that is bigger news to me than Russ saying he's, you know, picks these teams or whatever it is. So until the Seahawks say he's our quarterback, that could happen. So then it becomes, I'm looking at this, Ross, how do you get value? How do you get equal value for Russell Wilson? I don't want draft picks. Who wants draft picks? They're not going to amount to Russell Wilson. So now you're talking about, man, can he get the best offensive player, the best defensive player on the team, and all those kind of things to, to add up. But, yeah, it's like what's the relationship there and why can't it be fixed? That's my question. If you were Ryan Pace, the Bears GM, yeah, is there any amount that's too much to give up to try to get Russell Wilson? I mean, that's one of the four teams he said. He's not going to the Saints. He's not going to the Cowboys. He's not going to the Raiders. It's really just the Bears. I mean, what are you willing to give up for him if you're the Bears? You know, I just said the opposite. I would give up a lot of picks. But if I'm the Seahawks, why do I care about picks? You know, none of the picks is going to amount to Russell Billion Wilson. Russell, even if combined. So would he give up Khalil Mack? Would he give up his best offensive player? You know, not Robinson because he's not signed. He's a tag player. Would he give up <laughs> a bunch of draft picks? I, that's why it's hard for me, Ross. I can't even come up with a package for these teams. Like if I'm the Seahawks, you know, I'm like, you know, keep offering. Just keep, keep, keep offering. It's not good enough. 
Andrew, so I, that's why I think he won't be traded. Yeah, I got to ask you about the DAC contract because yeah. I talk with you every week on the Ross Tucker podcast, and I think on Wednesday you said something I've never heard you say before. I asked you what you thought about the DAC contract. Tell everybody, tell all the Dan Patrick Show listeners what you thought about the DAC as it relates to him and the Cowboys. He won. He won. You know, every marker, he set a new record. First year money, 75 million. Three year money, 126 million. Four year money, 160 million. Three year money is twice, repeat, twice the three year money of Patrick Mahomes' first three years. And the most important part of all that, Ross, he's a free agent at age 31, or the Cowboys are leveraged once again at age 30. So I just think like every marker you look at in a contract, he won. And I'm amused by the people that said six months ago, oh, he hurt his leverage. You should have taken the deal. He got hurt. Doesn't matter. He won. I've never said that. About it. Maybe not never, but I don't say that often because management usually wins. Well, I win every time I get a chance to talk with you because I learn a bunch. Love getting an expert opinion such as yourself. Check him out on Twitter at Andrew Brandt. Certainly check out the Business of Sports podcast. Andrew, thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Ross. Newsletter, andrew-brandt.com. Love it. Andrew-brandt.com. Free newsletter, Sunday morning. Love it.